Nandini was also a bit stunned after seeing Manamekali and Diadeva in the hunting hall. Whoa! How did you get here? She asked. Devi. I came as their friend said that it was their command. I came to know after coming here that the woman should not have listened to wisdom, said Vandiyathevan. Sister. I did not reason with him, I begged him to come with me to see them. Said Manamekali. Nandini got over her initial shock and smiled. My dear friend. When we women pray to men, it is like speaking wisdom. She said. Just as wisdom dictates. Tell me, goddess. As they call me, the princess drags me by the arm. As a result, I have to be entangled with these murderers. Vandiyathevan said. Sir. If you look at what happened here, don't you think these people are murderers? If I hadn't come here now, you would have killed them all, not them. Sister. These are murderers. They tied him up with the tailless monkey a while ago. Nandini smiled lightly and said, Manamekali. Didn't you say that once he was hiding behind this tailless monkey? They somehow know that. She said. Not at all, sister. Those are the men I saw in this hunting lodge the day before you came. They came after him that very day. Fortunately he escaped from them. Again, why did you bring him to them today, Manamekali? Why did you bring him this way? Sister. A little while ago my Tamayan was saying that he was going to see them. I brought him this way so that he wouldn't be seen, that's a good thing. Otherwise, these murderers. Brother. These are not murderers. They did not come to kill him. Two or three times he was caught alone by them. But they left him alive. You can know the truth of this by asking him. Then who are these, sister? Is what they said a moment ago true? Are these people they know? Are they here to pick them up? Manamegali asked in surprise. Yes, friend. They came to save me. I'll tell you everything. You two come with me to the next room. Let them be. Said Nandini. Then looking at Ravi Dasan, he said, Magician. If you do any harm to either of these two, I will treat it as harm done to me. You must treat them with the utmost respect wherever and whenever you meet. She said. Ravi Dasan said, Goddess. I have to forgive you. This boy knows our singing voice. He is the one who gave the owl voice a while ago. He said. Didn't you know that this warrior was one of us ever since? Magician. Where has your wit gone? Let it go. From now on, you must not make a sound here until I make it known again. Beware. Said Nandini. Then, Nandini, Manamegala and Vandiyathevan entered Nandini's room through the elephant door. The door was immediately closed. Brother. You are very clever. It is good to have brought him through the hunting hall. Your Tamayan is just leaving here. He has said that he is bringing Aditha Kari Kalar. I must send you away by then. I must bid you farewell. Said Nandini. Sister. What is this? Didn't you say you were going to send him to find out the truth about their husbands? You mean they're going to get an answer? Said Manamekali. I have changed my mind after speaking to your Tamayan, sister. I cannot stay here any longer, whether the slayer is alive or not. It is too dangerous for this warrior to be here any longer, sir. Get out of here at once. Even if you have no desire for your own life, leave this girl at once. Said Nandini. Sister. If he's going, Tell him to take me too. I can't stay in this palace prison after you and him are gone. Said Manamekali. Princess. You don't know what the Queen of Palavur thinks. They say that if I leave here, you can marry Aditha Kari Kalar and become the crown prince of the Tanjore Empire. Said Valavarayan. No, I didn't say that. I wouldn't want any woman to have the ignominy of marrying Aditha Kari Kalar. What's more, does Manamegali, who has become my life, want that fate? 
sir. You twist my opinion to your will. If you run away now, you may have the privilege of marrying this girl in another time. Manamekali. If your love for him is true love, tell him to leave here immediately. Said Nandini. Queen. I am ready to go. I am begging you for a thing they have. If you give it, I will go at once. Vandiyathevan said. Sir. What is there of such a thing that you may demand of me? Tell me. They have a sword engraved with the symbol of a fish. If you give it to me, I will leave. Do they know that I left mine in the flood? Vandiyathevan said. Sir. There are many swords and shafts in the hunting hall. May you take what you need and depart this instant? Why should I, as a woman, ask for the only weapon I have to save my life? Are you worshipping the goddess with that sword just to save their lives? Tell me the truth. I keep that knife to save my chastity more than my life. Goddess. Is there no other purpose? What other purpose could I have? Couldn't it be to avenge Veera Pandiyar's death? I thought you wouldn't take up that talk when Manamegali is there. I don't need to hide any more. Sister. You too know. Know the purpose of my coming to this Kadampur palace. Saying this, Nandini Devi took the sword marked with a fish in her hand which was kept on the bed by her side. I did not come here to settle the internal strife of the Chola Empire. I did not come here to divide the kingdom between Madhuran Dakadeva and Aditya Kari Kalar. I did not come here to feast in the Kadampur Palace. Sister. I did not come here to get you married. I came to take revenge on Badagan who beheaded Veera Pandya. This is the sword of the Pandya clan. Upon this I have sworn a vow. I have come to fulfill that vow. Either I will fulfill my vow tonight, or I will fulfill my life. Nandini stopped talking like she was mad. Are you asking me to go because I will be a hindrance to it? Are you trying to scare me that my life will be in danger? Vandiyathevan said. Aha! Are you going to stop me from finishing my blame? Good thing. Who said no? Go to your friend and tell him all this and stop him from coming here. I came to them that the goddess could not tell him and forbid them. I came to stop them from doing this sinful thing by falling at their feet and begging. Aha! Uh -huh. Is it a sin? What is a sin? Let's ask my friend. Manamekali. You tell me. You have given your heart to someone. When he is wounded and helpless, his enemy comes to kill him. You fall at his feet and pray that he will not kill your lover. He kills you without even asking. He is going. Do you say, my dear, that it is a sin to take revenge on such a grudge? I'll never tell, sister. But I wouldn't have fallen at his feet and begged like you. I'd have taken my knife and killed him before. Manamekali said. Vandiyathevan turned to Manamekali and said, Princess. What if that enemy happens to be their own brother? He asked. Brother, whoever it is, it's all the same to me. Said Manamekali. Say so, my dear. Said Nandini. The princess says without thinking about what she is saying. Will she have the heart to kill her Damayan Kanamaran despite what he has done against her? Valavarayan asked. Nandini and Manamegali looked at each other. Then Nandini looked at Vandiyathevan and said, What is this vain question? I am not going to kill my own born brother. When you first met me, you mentioned the name of my Damayan Tirumalai. That is why I admired you. I helped you to escape from danger many times because you were a friend of all Wurkadian. Sir. If today I have to lose my life without fulfilling my vow, I must tell Tirumala that I have asked him to forgive me. Even if I have not fulfilled his promise, I must say that I have not completely forgotten him. She said. Amini. Why is this hypocritical drama still? All Wurkadian is not there to Mia neither are they the sister of that valiant Vaishnava. Then who is my mother? Whose sister am I? Their heirs are Adithakari Kalas. I pray that they do not fall into the evil of brotherhood because of that. 
I beg you to kindly give me the killing sword of the Veerapandaya clan. Didn't you tell the prince the strange fantasy that Kari Kalar and I were born together? Did he believe it? Nandini asked with a sarcastic smile. He seemed convinced, but I knew nothing of his mind. I know what he has in mind. He marvels greatly at the imagination of that old Mahini. Amini. What I have said is not a fantasy. It is not a fantasy of old age I lay Aprati. I have seen it with my own eyes in the country of Elam. What did you see? I saw a female deity who had no power to speak. She saved me, Alvarkadian and Aromas Hivarmara from danger. In the streets of Anuradhapura, at midnight, when we were passing by an old mansion, she stood on the opposite side of the road and called us with a signal. When Aromas Hivarmara and we moved towards her, the front of the house we were standing in collapsed. Fell. Pawnee's lord worshipped the goddess as his clan deity. Sir. What does this story have to do with me? You could have told all this to the younger bratty who wanted to place a Rolmas Hivarmara in the Chola Singh Adana, she would have been amazed and delighted. Why are you telling me? There is a reason for that. When I saw the princess from a distance in the dim moonlight on the streets of Anuradhapura, I thought, how did the young queen of Palvur, whom we had parted with in Tanjavur, end up here? I was amazed. Ma'am. There is not even an atom of difference between you and him in appearance. If you remove the ornaments and part your hair, you will look exactly like him. Why should I believe what you say? I know you are very imaginative. Why shouldn't this be one of your rarest imaginations? Goddess. I swear. No matter how much you swear, I can't believe it. Queen. What you say is unbelievable is a lie. You know that I am telling the truth. You are using that fact for your own purposes. First, when I was talking to you in the Tanjore Palace, this magician came screeching like an owl. You told me to stay away. The treasure that had accidentally been opened. I was hiding in the dungeon when I happened to see some strange sights. Aha! Uh -huh. What rare sights are those? I saw Kanamaran going through that dungeon passage with Madhurinthak Deva. So what? For a while I saw you and the Great Reaper going to the same dungeon. I didn't know where you were going then. I only guessed. I knew that you were going to torment the Emperor by pretending to be the spirit form of their mother. Nandini who had been standing firmly and talking all this time, now suddenly got tired and sat on one of the asanas lying there. Sir! What else have you learned? Kanamaran who had taken Madhurand Hagar was coming back when he and the elder Palyavatareya were on their way to the dungeon. He said something to Palyavatareya. He signalled to the guard who came with him carrying a torch. What signal is that? They should have known that. The Punisher ordered to stab Kandamaran to death in the back. I stopped him and saved Kandamaran's life. As a result, the blame for stabbing him in the back fell on me. Nandini looked back at Manamekali and said Sir. Why are you disturbing this girl by saying something? She said. Goddess. I have not told anyone about all this all this time. If you had given me the sword in your hand, I would not have told anyone again. You can't give me the sword, sir. Why? Tell anyone. Tell me if you want any more imagination. Why? Go to Carrie Kaler now and stop him coming here. Why bother me? Go. When Nandini said that, tears welled up in her eyes. Lady. I know the prince's temper very well. I cannot stop him. If I try to stop him, his stubbornness will increase. That is why I have come to pray for you. What right do you have to pray to me? Let everything you say be true. Let it be that you have seen the mother who gave birth to me in the country of Ela. Why should I abandon my vow for that? The emperor has betrayed my mother. Why should I show mercy to him and his people? Is the reason not even more? No, not the queen. Think if their mother would approve of their revenge. The old woman has held the emperor's people dear to her heart. Think if she would like them to kill one of them with their own hands? 
not one day. She would hate them if they knew what they had done. She as long as he lives, he will grieve around them. With his mouth he cannot speak. But the sight of his eyes will make them suffer eternally in hell. Tears were now welling up in Nandini's eyes. She wiped her tears and looked up. Her face showed pain as if she had seen some tragic scene. Mother! Mother! Is it not enough that Veerapandiyar's head and body come separately and take away my soul? Do you want to come somewhere else and surround me? Saying that, she covered her eyes with her hand as if she could not bear to see the scene. For a while, only the sound of Nandini's whining was heard in the room. Manamegalai looked at Vandiyathevan and said, Sir! I didn't know you were so cruel. She said. Hearing this, Nandini immediately removed her hands from covering her eyes and said, There is nothing wrong with him, sister. He is saying it for my good. He is saying it to save me from great harm. And yet it torments me like this. She said. Then, with tears in his eyes, he said to Vandiyadeva, Sir. You have achieved what no one has ever achieved. Here, according to your wish, I give this sword to you, and you will receive it. She held out her sword. When Vandiyadevan held out his hand to take it, Nandini took it back again. Wait a minute. Tell me if you can do me a favor before I take the sword. If I leave here without fulfilling my vow, the people in the hunting hall will not leave me alone. They will leave me alive and set on fire. I fear not even that. But before I die, I will see my mother once. I wish. Monkey warrior. I told you I didn't believe everything you said. That was wrong. I believe everything you said about my mother wandering in the jungles of Eland. I believe every word. I have seen her myself. When? How? Vandiyathevan asked. I would be startled to think that what was lying was my lifeless body. I would be tormented by thinking whether all this is happening in reality, happening in a dream, or if it is my paranoia, I have developed a mental disorder. After coming to my senses, I was convinced for several reasons that all I saw was the true appearance. Mainly, I realized the confusion that Sundara Chola felt when he saw me. From many other signs and from all Workadians sometimes mistaken words, I was sure that there must be one mother who had an image like me. I wanted to see him once, lie on his lap and cry. Sir! The words you have spoken today have multiplied that passion. If you will take me to my mother, I give up my revenge. I will give you this sword of the Pandya clan right now!" said Nandini in awe. Vandiyathevan was deep in thought. What's all this fuss about? Has the well-cutting goblin left? He thought that. Manamekali said. Sir. I also pray to you. Promise to fulfill my sister's wish. Vandiyathevan said very reluctantly, I'll see if I can. He said that. Then we must leave at once. We must leave before Adidakari Kalan gets here. How can we get out of here? The entrance is dangerous, and even if Kanamaran and Kari Kalan come in front. Said Nandini. I'm going to lead the hunt through the tunnel inside the hall, come on!" Vandiyathevan said. Sister! I'm coming too! Take me too!" said Manamekali. Nandini ignored it and said, I don't want to go into the hunting hall. Ravidasan and his men will not let us go alive. Amini! Just give me the sword in their hand. I will deal with all four of them! Vandiyathevan said. No. That's going to cause a lot of trouble, Manamegala. Is there no other way to get out of here? Asked Nandini Devi. She raised her hourglass brow and thought for a while. Sister. I don't see any other way. But ask this man himself. Once upon a time he disappeared magically from this room. Ask how he went. She said. Nandini looked at Vandiyathevan's face. Vandiyathevan said, Yes, madam. There is another way. I found it by chance. But it is not easy to get through. You have to jump from floor to floor, 
from floor to floor, and then up the wall. I doubt if they can do it. Rather than the magician and his men with one hand it's easy to see and follow the tunnel. Vandiyathevan said. Then Manamekali said, Oh, it looks like they are coming. She said startled. Both listened intently. Yes, then I heard footsteps coming from the front of the palace. Sir. Go into the hunting hall quickly. Said Nandini. I have another good place to hide. Goddess. Give me that sword this way. Vandiyathevan said. Nandini held out the sword in front of him to give it to him. Then her hand dropped, the sword fell to the ground and made a clanging sound.